Hey family, I'm Pastor Torre. I'm Pastor Sarah. And listen, you're getting ready to hear an incredible word from the Lord. I believe it's gonna bless you. I believe it's gonna be timely. Do me a favor, share the message. If it moves you, share the message. And then also you have an opportunity to be a part of not only helping to spread this message, but to be a part of our outreaches. We're doing a lot of practical things to be a blessing to someone. So feel free if God so moves you, to use the information here in the video to support what we're doing. We're being a blessing not to just people spiritually, but we're being a blessing to people practically. We love you. Get into this message, it's gonna change your life. Happy Sunday, family. This is my favorite day of the week. And that worship song is one of the reasons why I love this day of the week so much because it's an opportunity for us to be intentional about inviting God into the presence of our lives, into the presence of our homes and atmospheres. God has given me a word that falls so in line with this worship song and I wanna get right into it. If you guys are taking notes, I want you to write down our scriptures for today in this subject. This is something that I just want you to be thinking on as we, die into the, as we dive into the word. Die to the word, I like that. Sometimes you got to die to the word. Come on, somebody. We're going to be in John 10, verse 17 through 18. And my subject for today is for the shade. For the shade. It'll make sense when I'm finished. But just jot that down if you're taking notes. My text begins. It's the New King James Version. It's Jesus talking. And he's trying to educate us on his relationship with God. And he gives us this analogy about sheep. But at the end of the analogy, he kind of lets us in on the fact that he's talking about his relationship with God. And it says, therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Spirit of the living God, come and move. Father, we've made room for you. Wherever we are in this moment, some of us watching from home, some of us watching in the car, some of us watching from work, wherever we are, this is our way of making room for you. And so, Father, we simply say, come and move. Have your way in our life, great God, that you are. Father, you breathed on this word. And so I'm asking that you would release it in just the way they need to receive it. That there would be none of me and all of you. May I decrease, Father, that you may increase. And I ask that you would make my mind so sharp and my words so clear that these words seek past our excuses and our fears and trepidation and that it take roots in the soul of our spirit, Father, and that it produces rich, rich fruit that feeds our family for generations after generations. Let this be one of those moments that we mark as never the same again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, if you said amen, I want you to type amen in the comments. I need an amen corner. You're, you're my amen corner in the chat room today. I was studying about trends and some of the trends that are important in marketing and social media, because I'm always interested in how things evolve over time. And there is this period in social media history that forever changed the way that we would engage with one another on social media. And that was called Instagram. Do y'all remember when Instagram came out? Like we were all on Twitter or on Facebook and I can remember thinking Instagram's not gonna be that much fun because all you can do is like post pictures, right? And come to find out though that that is actually what makes Instagram unique in its delivery as it relates to other social media platforms. Because images are literally worth a thousand words. That with one picture, you can say more than you could in a long Facebook note or a long tweet that there's something about imagery during the racial unrest of an officer and a young girl hugging one another that says something about the state of our nation when we started seeing nurses in masks with scars on their face from working all day and grocery clerks in the store. There wasn't this huge article, but there was something about that image that helped us realize that our 
essential workers were more heroic than we even realized, images are worth a thousand words. Images are so important that research is beginning to show that by the year 2021, that's just next year, that almost a third of all social media users will be on Instagram. Maybe that doesn't seem like a large number, but that breaks down to 928 million users all over images. Science proves that a mind is able to process images in 13 milliseconds. Have you ever read something and needed all day to digest and marinate what you read, but that one picture sticks with you and you understood everything that was happening in that moment because our mind processes images very quickly? So what does that mean then when we hear something like we are made in the image of God, but we don't? have an image of God. If I'm honest, I think that that's one of the most challenging parts of being a believer sometimes, is trying to become an image we've never seen. Genesis 1 and 26 says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our image according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. But when God says this, he says this before a time where there are photographs where he could just hang the picture up and say, this is your goal. There is an essence that he's trying to convey that he made humanity in, but humanity is unaware of what that image is. You see, if you give me an image, I know what I can become. That's why role models are so important in communities because if I have an image, if I have something I can point towards, then I know what direction I should be heading in. And that's when we don't have images, we end up suffering because we end up telling people you can do this and you can do that, but they've never seen anyone who looks like them or acts like them or talks like them actually become that person. And so we're telling them that it's possible, but they don't have an image. That's when I realized that I needed to really further dissect this word to understand what is it that God is saying when he's telling us that we're made in his image, but we don't have that visual representation at the time that he gives this statement. The Hebrew of the word shows that that word image doesn't mean visual in the way that we're used to seeing it, but it means shade. We're made in the shade of God. If PT was here, he would say, are you tracking with me? Because I feel like I need you to keep with me during this because I want you to understand how important it is for you to realize that I was made not just in the image as in the visual representation of God, but I was made to live in the shade of God. Let us make man in our shade. God says man's ability to thrive on the earth is going to come down to them being able to live in my shade. If you live in the shade of God, you feel the warmth of what's taking place, but you don't feel the heat of it. God says, I want to take the heat so they can live in the shade. I don't want them to have to suffer. I don't want them to feel pain. I don't want them to have to go through death. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make man in my shade. I'm going to show them how to live in the earth. I'm going to show them how to have dominion. I'm going to set everything up so they can live in my shade. And then he says, let us make men in our image, in our likeness. So I'm going to make them to live in my shade with that reality that they can also become shade. They're going to be made in my shade, but they can also become in my likeness. Because when we live in the shade of God, if we do this thing properly, then we become shade for someone else. I felt that for somebody. You need to tell somebody, you better watch out when you're messing with me. I'm shady. I'm shady, but not shady in the way that you're used to. I'm saying that if you get up underneath my covering, I'm going to protect you. If you get up underneath my covering, I'm going to make sure that you grow when you become. There's a certain level of protection that comes when you are connected with someone. Can you provide shade? My husband and I, when we first started dating, I was doing what I could to provide shade for my two children. And I knew that if we were going to come together, that we could come together and we 
we could produce more shade for our entire family. We believed in something that was bigger than us, and we recognized that there is always war against what God is trying to protect. And so my responsibility, if you are in my life, is to partner with God to protect you. I feel God saying that when God brings someone into your life, that part of your responsibility is to provide shade for them. There is some heat they shouldn't have to take because you've already gone ahead of them or because you already have wisdom and lessons that you're able to provide for them. I had to learn how to be shaded. That's the greatest lesson that so many of us could stand to learn is to learn how to live in the shade. Isn't that after all what messes up Adam and Eve in the garden? Is they didn't realize how protected they were by living in the shade of God. And so what the enemy wants more than anything is he wants to disrupt that protection. He wants to disrupt that protection so that you're no longer living in the shade of God and you start to be burned in certain areas and you start to feel like maybe I shouldn't have done this and and I'm rejected and I'm abandoned and my pride is in the way I'm starting to get burned because I'm not living in the shade anymore. That's what the enemy wanted from the very beginning when the serpent tries to lure Adam and Eve into eating the fruit. His ultimate plan is to get them from underneath the shade, but he didn't know that God was going to come back in. He may have burned them, but he couldn't kill them because they invited God back into the shade. I don't know who you're, who you are or what you've gone through, but I hear God saying you may have been burned, but God has shade that can keep you from being burned again. That just because you have been burned doesn't mean that you have to continue to live outside of the shade of God. That Adam and Eve, the most powerful thing that they did is they started engaging with God after they had been burned. And after you have been burned, sometimes we don't want to engage with God. God because we don't trust ourselves anymore and sometimes we don't trust that God will understand that it happened on accident or we don't trust God because we feel like he may do us the way other people did us but I hear God saying that just the way he got down in the heat of things with Adam and Eve that he will get down in the heat of things with you and all of a sudden the enemy could have burned you but God says my shade can still cover that there are some people in this room that the only reason why certain things didn't happen to you that happened to to other people around you is because you were living in the shade of God. I wish I had about five seconds and 10 church people who didn't mind cutting up on the internet real quick and having a praise break because they recognized that the only reason why I didn't go through what some other people went through is because I was living in the shade of God. That it wasn't just my grandmother, that there was the shade of God hovering over me. It doesn't mean I didn't get burnt sometimes. It's just that the burns couldn't stay because I was living in the shade of God. That's why the bullets couldn't kill me that's why the divorce couldn't take me out that's why the suicide attempt didn't work because I was living in the shade of God I want you to take 10 seconds and to just say thank you God for allowing me to live in the shade thank you God for allowing me to live in your covering it doesn't mean that everything went the right way it doesn't mean that everything for me has been no crystal stairs but what it does mean is that when the sun came out and it started to scorch my skin that I messed around and got down on my knees and said God if your presence would get down in the midst of this God if you would send your glory in the midst of my pain then I could handle it if I'm in your shade God you don't have to move the sun just bring your shade God you don't have to take me out of this situation just let me know that you're in it because if I sense that you're in it I can withstand the heat how can Withstand the heat. I just want to be in the shade of God. I just want to live in the shade of God. I feel like I'm supposed to move past that, but there's something down in my soul that wants to thank God that in the midst of a pandemic and in the midst of racial unrest and in the midst of what it seems like the world is falling apart, that he still got me in his shade, that I'm still connected to him. He still kept me in his shade. I've seen other people had to bury some loved ones. I've seen other people who lost their minds, but God, you kept me in your shade. God, you kept pulling me up when I was trying to sink down God I wanted to be depressed but you sent someone to call me God I didn't want to watch the message but something kept pulling on me could it be that it has been shade all of this time could it be that the reason it didn't happen to me wasn't because I was so smart and it wasn't because I was so talented but it was because of your shade 
And so now, now I walk differently and I talk differently because I recognize that my words have to stay in the shade and my actions have to stay in the shade. I gotta live in the shade of God. I'm made in the image of God. I'm made in the shade of God so that I can become shade. I'm trying to cast a shadow. I'm trying to cast a shadow that's bigger than me and I can't do it unless I'm connected to someone who's casted a shadow that's bigger than me. Shade begets shade, literally. Shade begets shade. When you've been covered, you know how to be covering. That's why you got to get up underneath some covering. You got to say, I need to understand how to create a shadow. Some of you have generational blessings that you know are assigned to your name, but you don't know how to get from point A to point B. And I hear God saying that you need to get under some covering because when you get under some covering, God shows you how to create shade. I show you how to act in the meetings. I show you how to act when you've been promoted because I teach you how to be shade. And so when God sends Jesus, he sends Jesus because humanity doesn't understand that being made in the image of God, they need a visual representation. They don't understand how to live in the shade. And so we know that what happened in the garden means that the serpent in many ways removed the shade. And so now we have to work harder for what was supposed to come naturally. We have to work harder to live in the shade than we were originally created to have to work for because of what happened in the garden. So God says, I need to send someone to come down to teach them how to live in my image, but be on the earth. You see, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like there's a great divide between where I am and the image I've been made in. Sometimes we gotta work for the image. We're made in the image of God to ultimately become like God on earth, but it feels like there's such a big difference between where I am and where God is. You see, sometimes we spend so much time focusing on what we think the image is supposed to be that we don't recognize the work connected to creating the image. God help me. It's my parents have been married for 38 years. And all I saw my whole life was the image of their marriage. But I didn't realize how much work it took to produce the image. I see so many successful business people and now as a business owner, I see that you don't just become successful because you reach for an image, but that there is work required to get to that image. I don't know if you got, well, of course you all remember this, but you know, it wasn't always as easy as taking a picture and printing it out on your printer. Remember when you really had to develop photos, to go into the dark room and to shake the cans and to allow the light to be exposed so that you could finally get that image. I hear God saying that if you are going to become like him, that you can't focus so much on how far you are from being made in the image of God, but rather ask God, what is the work that I am doing to produce that image? This is where this word comes in that we don't always like to hear, but it is so important in producing the image of God. When we talk about being made in the image of God, we talk about things like having God's authority and having God's power because those things are sexy and they make us feel strong and they make us feel wise, but we don't understand that one of the most powerful things about being made in God's image has nothing to do with those powerful treading on serpents and casting out demons, though that is amazing. One of God's most profound love languages is sacrifice. John 3 and 16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave. God says that if you're really gonna be made in my image, then I wanna know what you're sacrificing. Mm. And I think it's important for us to identify the difference between sacrifice and struggle. You see, struggle is involuntary. We don't necessarily sign up for the struggle. We find ourselves in the struggle and the struggle ends up teaching us and we become better as a result of struggle. But sacrifice is what builds you. Struggle teaches you, 
But sacrifice multiplies you. Sacrifice is God's way of saying, I'm sending my son to the earth, not just so that I can give my son, but so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I'm sending my son. I'm making the sacrifice for multiplication. Struggle is trying to make ends meet. Sacrifice is saying that I'm going to pull back my spending so that I can have a future to plan for. If we don't understand the difference between struggle and sacrifice, we will think that we're struggling in the name of God, but God is saying, I want to see what you'll sacrifice for my name, not just what you're willing to endure. Some of us don't have a choice in us ending up struggling, but God says, what will you choose to lay down? What will you choose to give up in order to be made in my image? God says, some things were stripped away from you, and I'm sorry those things were stripped away from you, but that's just the way life was. But there's something about you taking power and ownership over what you know is keeping you from being made in the image of God and saying, this is the thing that I'm willing to lay down. I'm willing to lay down this relationship. I'm willing to lay down this habit. I'm willing to lay down this addiction. I'm willing to lay down this pride. I'm willing to lay down my laziness. Why? Because I want to become that image. I want to get closer to living in that shadow of God so that I can create a shadow. This isn't about surviving struggle anymore. We're not talking about surviving the pandemic anymore. We're not talking about surviving the earth anymore. We're talking about what we can take ownership in sacrificing for the sake of becoming more like God. I'm living for the shade. Sacrifice is one of God's love languages. It's why when we were all in church, we say, let's hear the sound of cheerful giving. Because a cheerful giver understands that sacrifice is a part of God's love language. And when I sacrifice for what he's doing in the earth, it proves that I'm not just asking God to give me, give me, give me, but I'm willing to sacrifice in order for us to become. There's nothing like the person who has the list of what they want in the partner, but they never mention who they're going to be to the partner because that's a give me, give me, give me mentality. But when you understand sacrifice, it says, I'm not going to ask you to be all of these things while I stay the same. Here's what I'm going to sacrifice in order for us to become. God understands sacrifice. That's why over and over again, we see prophets building an altar and we see God constructing tabernacles because he says, I want my people to be willing to understand the power of sacrifice. The most toxic relationships are the ones where there are no sacrifice. When you're not willing to give up anything so that we can become something. When you're not willing to give up anything, then I don't give up anything and we don't become anything because because no one was willing to sacrifice. But when you have two people who are willing to sacrifice because they recognize what is ahead of us is bigger than where we are right now, then God says, I can bless that relationship because they're willing to give up their own desires and their own flesh so that they can become one in me. Sacrifice is powerful. I dare say more powerful than struggle. And Jesus shows us this in his text because in John 10, 17 through 18, he tells us that part of the reason why his father loves him is because I lay down my life. There's that sacrifice language again. He says, my father loves me. I'm going to break this down, but for the sake of where we are right now, therefore, my father loves me because I sacrifice. Can I ask you a question? When is the last time you can legitimately say, I chose to lay this down for the glory of God? Not struggle, not the things you lost along the way that you didn't choose to give up, but you survived anyway. But when is the last time you were intentional about your sacrifice? That you gave a sacrificial praise? That you gave a sacrificial seed? That you said, I know it's tight for me right now, but I want to sow even greater because I want to show God that I'm willing to sacrifice. 
Because sacrifice for us is not this one-time thing where I sacrificed last year or I sacrificed a decade ago. I'm talking about living in the mindset of sacrifice. My husband and I were married. We're raising children. Every aspect of our life requires some level of sacrifice. And for some reason, my children don't care that I already sacrificed to put shoes on their feet last year. Their feet are still growing and I need to make another sacrifice to buy them more shoes. I have to continue you to sacrifice so that I can prove that I'm not just wanting you to stay on this level but I want to grow with you I wish I could say that the way it came to me but sacrifice says I want to grow with you sacrifice says that I'm not just doing it so that we can stay married this year I'm doing it so that we can stay married for the lifetime I'm signing up for a lifetime of sacrifice when I got into relationship with God my relationship with God dictated that I was going to have moments in my life where I allowed him to search me so that he could show me what I need to give up now. God, what do I need to give up in order to stay in your shade in this season? God, in the midst of me asking you to protect me and to keep me whole and to keep me healed, I forgot to ask you, Father, what can I lay down in my own life with my own power? Because what's more important to me than what you can do for me is that I show that I am worthy and I show that I am grateful to be in relationship with you. Jesus says, therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life. You know, I had to study that word lay. In the Greek, that word lay down, it literally means advise, appoint, bow, commit, conceive. It says, therefore, my father loves me because I appoint my life. Does your life have an appointment? Or are we just randomly floating around? You see, because this scripture goes on to say, it says, no one takes it from me, which helped me to understand for the first time when I saw this scripture, that if my life doesn't have an appointment, then my life can be randomly taken from me. If I'm not laying my life down, then my life can be taken from me. But see, when I recognize that my life has an appointment, I am intentional about laying it down and where I lay it down because I recognize that this is not just any old life that I'm laying down, that this life has been instilled with the breath of God, that I was made in the image of God. So I don't just allow my life to be randomly out here being appointed to whoever's will and whoever's purpose. I have to qualify where I'm laying my life down because I recognize the power connected to my life. Jesus recognized the power connected to his life and he says I'm not just laying my life down so that this world can become better I'm doing it because it is an appointment it is a part of my divine identity and I am going to stay in the shade of God even if it means that I am shaded to death even if it means that the shade follows me into the tomb and three days later the shade is going to resurrect me again you see when you live in the shade of God it doesn't matter where the shade takes you because you recognize that if I'm laying my life down in the shade then there's a resurrection connected to this shade as well you see there is no death in the shade of God there is no pain in the shade of God so even if I experience it temporarily if I stay in the shade I'm going to see the victory connected to the other side of it because I've learned the power of living in the shade so Jesus says in this text that he lays his life down that I may take it again and no one takes it from me. I wanna challenge you to take inventory of your life and to begin to ask yourself, when is the last time I woke up and appointed and committed my life in the direction of what God is doing? When is the last time that I said to myself, I need to sacrifice this because it's keeping me from where I know I need to be in God? Because like I said before, if you don't appoint your life, then someone may disappoint your life. If I don't appoint it, then someone can disappoint it. But if I stay where God has placed me, and I trust that this is where God has called me to be because I understand that I laid my life down for his purposes, 
then there will always be a level of resurrection connected to it. Jesus has appointed his life to establishing the kingdom of heaven. That is the ultimate appointment that any of us can have. The ultimate appointment, the ultimate thing that we can lay our lives down for is for establishing the kingdom. Now, this is important for us to understand because the culture has a different narrative and the world and business and and professional circles have a different narrative about the greatest appointment we can have. They'll have us thinking that the greatest appointment we can have is meeting with the CEO or the greatest appointment we can have is getting a certain amount of money in our bank account. And if we fall for that, then we will miss that the greatest appointment that any of us can have is to be willing to establish the kingdom of God in any season by any means necessary. Necessary. Whether he does what I ask him to do or not, I'm still going to establish the kingdom because I want to live in the shade of God. I feel like that's somebody's word right now, that you've been feeling disappointed because life got thrown off track and you've been thinking to yourself, I may not get to there. And I hear God saying there never mattered. The only thing that really mattered was here. And I want to know what you're going to do with here. I want to know what appointments you're going to make with your life from here. I hear God saying that you could start your ministry now. I hear God saying that you could establish the kingdom right where you are. I hear God saying that I want the kingdom to come to your house. You want a bank account, but I want the kingdom to come to the grocery store. I want the kingdom to show up anywhere you tread your feet. So I put the world on pause so that my real workers could roll up their sleeves and start asking God, how are we going to do this thing on the internet? How are we going to do this thing in the grocery store? Because my job, my responsibility is to lay down my life in any season. God, I don't want the job if I can't establish your kingdom. I don't want the conference if I can't establish your kingdom. I don't want the church if I can't establish your kingdom. I'll lay my life down. I'll move out of this city. I'll move out of this house. I'll do whatever is necessary because what is more important to me is not getting there. What is most important to me is establishing that I will lay down my life to live in your shade. And I want you to know I feel this for you prophetically. God sees where you lay your life down. Get that down in your spirit. You've laid your life down and you're wondering if God sees it. And Jesus is telling us right here in this text that the reason why God loves me is because I laid my life down. Wherever you lay your life down, I want you to know that God marked the spot. And it may be five years down the road, and it may be 10 years down the road, but I want you to know that God remembers where you laid your life down. He remembers where you let go of the bitterness. He remembers where you let go of the pride. He remembers where you let go of the winds so that you could get in a position where you were low again, where you were hurting again, where you were wondering again. And God said, I marked the spot where you laid your life down and if you can remember where you laid your life down I'll show you how to take it up again God says I'll give you power to take it up again when you lay it down I looked up that word take and it means to accept and be amazed (laughs) That means I laid my life down to go where you sent me. I laid down my pride, I laid down my ego. I laid down my bitterness, I laid down my pain, I laid down my grief and it hurt me to do it because I wanted to stay bitter and I wanted to stay confused and I didn't want to trust you again and I didn't want to try the church thing again and I didn't want to do the business thing again but I laid down my life and God says, because you appointed your life. When you take it up again, you're gonna be able to accept your life and be amazed. God, how could I have known that when I laid my life down, that when I picked it back up, 
that you would restore to me a woman I didn't even recognize, a man I didn't even understand, that when I laid my life down, that when I picked it back up, that you were going to multiply what I laid down. I hear God saying, I multiplied what you laid down. You sacrificed and you gave your whole life to something. And I hear God saying, I marked the spot. And when it's time for you to pick it back up again, that you're going to be amazed at what I did with your sacrifice. If that's your word, I want you to say, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. I want you to type it in the comments type it in the comments that's me that's me that's me I laid my life down and I thought God forgot I thought God wasn't going to remember but I hear God saying that I put a mark on that grave I put a mark where that thing died I put a mark where that vision of yours died and you're going to take it up again and it's not going to look like anything that you laid down Jesus lays his life down to the grave but who he becomes when it's time for him to take it back up again I mean he came in rolling on clouds I mean the glory was so evident in him that you could see the scars from when he laid his life down but the scars were already healed as if it had never happened God says there's a version of you that I want to prove to you exists but you can't see it unless you're willing to sacrifice for the shade you can't see it unless you're willing to lay down for the shade I hear God saying that you can take the heat because you're gonna be in my shade that you can take the disappointment because you're gonna be in my shade you can take the betrayal because you're gonna be in my shade you can take the abuse because you're gonna be in my shade that when it gets finished and it's all said and done that you will sacrifice nothing that I don't see and when the time is right you may have to wait three days to be resurrected you may have to wait eight years to be resurrected but I hear God saying I kept tabs on everything you were giving up I hear God saying my books are always tight my books are always solid that I know exactly what you gave up And all we have to do is come to the place where we see like Jesus sees, that I'm willing to sacrifice. That's the word God kept telling me over and over again, is that we've been so busy struggling that we forgot the power of sacrifice. I hear God saying that sacrifice changes things. Sacrifice shifts things. Sacrifice is our way of putting seed in the ground. You got so caught up in the struggle and how could you not? The whole world has been a struggle lately, but I hear God saying your power is in your sacrifice. You wanna feel empowered again. It's not about the world going back to normal. It's about you finding a way to lay your life down. And so, family, I had one assignment and one assignment only. And that was to bring us back into the consciousness of sacrificing for the shade. I want to be made in the image of God, the, the shade of God. So there are some things I got to lay down in order to stay in that shade. But I don't have to keep it there forever. I just have to keep it there long enough for God to turn it into, a, into acceptance and amazement. I hear God saying, as I was studying this message, we're in August 8, New Beginnings. God told me as I was praying over this message that I'm calling my people back into my shadows, that I'm calling them back into my shade, that I'm calling them to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I'm calling them to live underneath my shadow again. And I want to know who's willing to sacrifice for that new beginning. If I'm honest, I've been waiting for December 31st because I would like to try again. But I hear God saying, if you're waiting on the calendar, then you miss that I gave you 
power to change your situation through sacrifice. I don't know what it is that you need to sacrifice, what fast you need to go on, what maybe seed you need to place into the kingdom. I don't know what your sacrifice is that's between you and God. But I hear God saying that there is a special anointing on the month of August. That specifically this number eight, this specifically this new beginning season, that there is a special blessing on it. And that for the month of August, if you would commit to sacrificing on the next level, that if you would commit to moving beyond struggle and saying, God, I want to sacrifice on a new level all throughout the month of August, that God says, I'm going to show you how to pick your life back up again. I don't know whose word that is. I don't know whose word that is, but I hear God saying that you feel like you've lost your life. I hear God saying, lay it down completely. Stop holding on to it. I hear God saying that someone's been trying to hold on to their life and try and convince God that you're laying it down at the same time. I hear God saying, let it die. Your will, your plans, your way, your disappointment, your grief, your pain. I hear God saying, I'm not saying it wasn't real. I'm not saying it didn't hurt, but I'm telling you to lay it down. And for one full month, particularly this month of August, I want you to try something different. I want you to try sacrificing, intentional sacrifice. And I cannot wait. I want you to send us your praise reports. I want you to let us know your testimony because I know that this word is from God. God gave it to me and he told me there was something about this month in which his people are going to get back under his shadow and we're going to see a shift in the world. Mark my words. The world is going to shift because of the people of God who get back underneath his shadow and make a commitment to sacrifice to see things turn around. And when we begin to sacrifice, God is true to his word. And Jesus is the perfect example of how when we come into alignment with him, that he takes what we lay down and he teaches us to take it up again. I want to pray with you. You've been listening to this message and you know that there are some things in your life you need to lay down. You need to lay those things down. You need to lay that relationship down. You need to lay that mindset down. I don't know what your thing is that's holding your life up, but you need to lay it down. And you're ready to make a commitment. This is all I want you to type in the comments is I commit. I commit, I commit, I commit, I commit. You don't even know what you're committing to beyond the fact that I am committing to get underneath the shade of God. I'm committing to the shade. I'm committing to the shade. I'm committing to getting back in the shade of God. And then for some practical steps, I want you to be intentional about whatever it is you need to sacrifice. What is it that I need to give up this month? What level of giving do I need to tap into this month? Whatever that thing is, I want you to be intentional. I want you to write it down and hold yourself accountable. 31 days we have in August. And we're going to start today. The most important thing I'm going to pray is that God would teach you and show you and reveal to you through this word and through this prayer that the most powerful thing you can do is live for him. Which means that you may have to die to self. Jesus knew the difference between his life and his self. He knew that I'm laying my life down. There was a separation between Jesus and his life in which he knew my spirit has this role. My spirit has this opportunity to, to come into alignment with God, but my flesh is going to have to die in order for me to come into alignment with God. That may be your testimony, that you have to separate your desires and your flesh so that you can lay it down so that God's spirit can be manifested in you. I speak multiplication over your life, that as you give your life to God, and as you accept that Jesus is the ultimate goal and the ultimate model on how to walk this thing out, that he's going to multiply your life in ways you could have never imagined. I don't mean just financially, because that's low-level blessing for God. I mean in ways that generational blessings spring up, that generational curses are broken, that doors are open that no man can shut, and doors are closed that no man can open. That's the type of thing that happens to us when we come into alignment with God and so if you can I want you to cup your hands 
like you're receiving something. If you can, I just want you to open your heart. Father God, we're laying our life down. Father, we lift our hands and surrender and we say at the end of the day, Father, what we want more than anything is to live in your shade. So God, I'm asking that you would highlight areas right now where my brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters, know that they need to lay something down, Father. Maybe they're curious about what it is. Father, highlight ways that they can sacrifice in a fresh new way. Show them how you want them to fast in this season, how you want them to dig in deeper with their word. Whatever that thing is, Father, what they're serving or giving, whatever it is, Father, highlight it because we're ready to sacrifice in a new way, Father. God, I thank you that as we open our hearts and bring ourselves into alignment, that you are not a man that you shall lie, that you already have our life on reserve beyond this moment. And so, Father, help us to become the person who understands that the greatest gift that we can give you is our sacrifice of our life and of our flesh. Father, I ask that you would bless this word that it would be on repeat in the minds of your sons and daughters, that every time they sacrifice, that they would remember that Jesus went ahead of them and that his glory was manifested so they never have to worry about whether or not you see their sacrifice. Seal this word, Father. Seal it and let nothing come and uproot it. No person, no situation, no experience. Let it not come up against this word, but Father, let it take root and may it build us, Father. Not just make us feel good. May it build us up into the type of people you had in mind when you first created humanity in the first place. We want to be built in your image, under your shade, in your likeness, so that we can take up space for the kingdom of God. And may when they see us, may they only see the kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen again. Can you type amen? Can you help me seal this word? You said you'd be my amen corner. Can you say amen in the comments? Listen, we love you so, so much. And we have such an incredible week. You know how we do. We're going to be connecting with you. Get on our social media. Get on YouTube. We're going to do this growth and sacrifice together. And so we want to make sure that you have a community of believers on this journey with you. Make sure you're plugged in. We're going to be walking this thing out with you. We love you, and we'll see you this week. Hey family, I'm Brenda Palmer. And my name is Ty Headley. And we would like to welcome you to The, the Breakdown. Breakdown. Family, before we hop into the conversation, you have to hop in the comments and tell us where you want to live. In the shade, Absolutely. in the shade. Ty, how about you? Where are you I want to live, live in the shade. In the shade. In the shade. Put the shade in the comments. Drop it in the comments, family. Absolutely. Guys, we have two very special guests with us today. Yes, we, I would like to introduce to you my girl, Ashley Amy. Hey y'all. She's a small groups co-lead and we are happy to have her in the breakdown. And we got Pastor Ebenezer with us. You all know Pastor Eb. He's our pastor, one of our campus pastors. We love Pastor Eb. Yes. What's going on, family? We are so excited. I don't know, where should we begin, guys? Actually, Ashley, how about you? Like, we are used to hearing shade as like a negative term, but yeah. how transformative was learning that shade is actually the covering of God. Yeah, that for me was like huge. Cause mm -hmm. when you think about shade, obviously from like a cultural standpoint, it's like, it's a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But to hear it under the context of like, shade is the way that like God covers us. Mm -hmm. And like, no matter what we go through, like no matter how hot it is, no matter how challenging it is, God's shade is what helps us to withstand the heat. So it blew my mind. No, Absolutely. it was so good. I think a good point for me that stood out was how we sometimes run from covering mm -hmm. because of past things that we've experienced. And I know for me, that was a huge thing. It's like when we experience a hurt in a certain place, we don't even want to enter into that place again. For instance, like church hurt. It's yeah. like we yeah. experience mm -hmm. church hurt somewhere. And then it's like, I'm really timid or I'm apprehensive about getting getting into that situation again. But it's like, we don't trust the people, we trust the covering of God, that wherever we go, he covers us as we go. Absolutely, I think that was super powerful. And, and Pastor Eb, I think it's really amazing to know that God's image is also synonymous with the shade, that he is our covering, that he covers over us. Could you talk about, maybe a little bit about how you've seen moments where you've stepped out of maybe the shade Ooh, of God's image, where you stepped out of that image and how you've actually been burned by it and you've experienced that before. Can you share a little bit about that? I mean, I can stepped out of, for me in my walk, I started outside of. Wow, uh, that's yeah. good. And so I'm very well aware of what it is like to have an entire life of feeling like you're being burned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. without the covering of God because I can I can very clearly see a, a huge portion of my life where that covering was not there. Mm -hmm. And the difference between now walking under the covering of God and then no, like noticing the difference in degrees. Because mm -hmm. the more you abide in his shade, the more accustomed to that shade you, you are. Mm -hmm. And so it's like your, 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 your skin gets used to it, your thinking gets used to it, your way of living gets used to it. Because how you live when there's intense heat is completely different from how you're living when you know you are completely uh, protected and covered by an eternal presence. So yeah. that just resonated with me right there. Absolutely, I know I think that's extremely powerful because if you really think about it, like that is the sacrifice because if you realize the sacrifice is actually something that is exchanged in order to get you into that shade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the exchange of sacrifice, as Pastor Sarah was talking about, that really brings us into that place of being like God's image, which we know now is that covering. I wonder how many of you guys in the comments yeah. or in our in, that are watching right now who I, you can relate to Pastor Ed. Maybe you've stepped out of the will of God. Maybe you've stepped out of alignment with that image that he's spoken over your life, that he's declared over you. And, and we just want to take a second, really, for you just to put in the comments that, that I'm willing to sacrifice. Yes. Like, yes. just right now, just put mm -hmm. in the comments, I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to sacrifice. And, and Brenda, I know that that really resonated with you about the sacrifice. I'd love to maybe hear a little bit about what what points in that sacrifice for you can, can really resonate like no I think that's the sacrifice part really got me because she also broke down like what it means to lay down in this whole idea of like appointments right yeah. and so I think for me it's just like understanding that I'm like sacrifice genuinely means laying down my thoughts my mm -hmm. plans what I like how I saw it how I pictured it and taking on God's but understanding that if, if if I wanted it to go this way I'm saying okay I'll lay it down for what God planned and understanding that it's to multiply it mm -hmm. like it like because sometimes when we have to lay down the way we want things to go it feels like a loss yeah. And so it's like to know that, no, when I'm laying it down and sacrificing it for God, that in the end, I'll have more than I ever would have had I gone about it my way. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, Ashley, can you Yeah. Really? And I, yeah, for sure. And I think, too, like even with the sacrifice of it all, like the thing is not only getting that multiplication, but understanding that God will require greater sacrifice mm -hmm. along the way. Yeah. So Come the on. first thing might be like, OK, God, I'm laying down this one thing that seems really small. And then God is going to keep like asking us, like, look, we got to level up. Mm -hmm. and if we leveling up then that's just you got to lay down more things along the way and yeah. so that's just the walk with god but the beauty is what's on the other side of what we have already laid down yeah. oh, that's I, so real mm -hmm. because and i'm glad you brought that out because sometimes we don't have that expectation and we end up in disappointment because mm -hmm. we like no god just i just laid this down like you, mm -hmm. you said you want something else and he's like yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah. like to, to your point it's like to level up so we go higher and higher but it requires more like the higher we go mm -hmm. so and that's real that, what's really cool too is is how Pastor Sarah was speaking about how Jesus' ultimate life, like his whole goal of his life, his appointment, was sacrifice. Mm -hmm. and, and if we all on this walk as believers know that we're to be like Jesus, that means we have to expect the sacrifice. We have to actually change our minds around to say sacrifice isn't this bad thing. It's not like she said, what is it, a struggle yeah. versus a sacrifice. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not a struggle when you realize that it is actually for your benefit. Mm -hmm. it, and that what you go through, the trials that you might face or the fires that you might get close to aren't actually going to burn you when you're under that shade, but it's going to refine you and make you more like that image or covered by that shade. No, that's so good because also it makes me think about how sacrifice is synonymous with love. Mm. If you think about God, his ultimate sacrifice was to give us Jesus, but that was also his greatest act of love. And so it's like, it helps me to know that if I have to sacrifice, it's really my display of how much I love God. Mm. It means that I love him mm. more than the thing that I'm sacrificing. But it's like the, the sacrifice and love being synonymous is mind blowing because I think it helps us get e it helps us do it easier. It's just like, I'm just following in God's footsteps. Like, he made a sacrifice for me. I, I could, how could I not? And I think it's also what I love that 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 first lady broke down was the intention behind it. Mm -hmm. That is the because right now with the way the world is, we've all been called to to give things up. Yep. But there is a difference between having to give something up because external circumstances mm -hmm. require Force it us to. Right. versus something on the inside of us, yeah. Yeah, the spirit on us. the inside of us saying you That's need to good. lay that thing down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, especially with the backdrop of a pandemic, it's mm -hmm. like now I can qualify right 
this is really a sacrifice because if this pandemic wasn't here, I'd give it up anyway. Ooh, that's so good. That's good. And that's so great. when she broke down how struggle was was involuntary, mm -hmm. but sacrifice was voluntary, I said, I need that. Yeah. Yeah. Because we'll mistake the two and yeah. say, well, Lord, I sacrificed it. He's like, you no, didn't eh, really sacrifice it. <laughs> the, the situation made yeah. you give it up right. and you want to tuck this in under the sacrifice lane and get blessed by it. And we'll try it. And, and First Lady broke that all the way down. It was like, no, you need to have your heart. You have to set that thing down from the spirit on the inside mm -hmm. of you. Absolutely. And guys, we want to even take a second to really tell you, like, and not even tell you, but ask you and really prompt you to ask the Lord, what is it that you need to, to sacrifice? What is it that you need to lay down? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Lord, like, I feel like he spoke to all of us in this, in this room and, mm -hmm. and in this moment when we got to watch this. And there were things inside of us that maybe he told us to lay down or maybe he put on our hearts and, and we're wondering, did he do that for you? And, and maybe that didn't happen in this moment, but take the time after this to really get in the prayer closet. Take time to, to sit with God and say, what is it that, that you want me to sacrifice? I'm willing to give you the sacrifice. After I've heard all this, I know that it's for my good. Mm -hmm. I know that it's for my benefit. No, that's so good, Ty. And I know that we've been in, because of the pandemic, a lot of us have experienced seasons of struggle. Mm. But Ashley, what has a uh, sacrifice looks like for you during this season? Yeah, on a practical level, like I was like, okay, financially, you don't know how things are gonna be in this mm. season. So I need to create a budget. But that sacrifice, it felt like lack for me, essentially, because wow. I was like, God, like I can't use, like you're telling me to put this aside and this is money that I have. But once I looked at just like the future of like, I'm putting this money to the side, I'm sacrificing now. So for what I need later. Mm -hmm. But it was the thing of like, I don't want to struggle. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. So let me put that aside and sacrifice. And so that's been just like a practical way of me being like, no, like everything that I'm doing is really for not not just for my good, but for the glory of God as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that is so good, family. And I think it's a perfect place for us to end. Maybe you're identifying what your sacrifice is, or maybe you are in a season of sacrifice. And I just want you to be encouraged to know that your sacrifice will yield fruit. Just like Pastor Sarah mentioned, where you sacrificed, God marked the spot and you will see the fruit of your sacrifice. Absolutely. and. and the, the spot being marked, she did say that he's got a tight book. Mm -hmm. So God His still has good. record. Yeah, yeah. he still yeah. got record of every sacrifice yeah. that you've yes. ever made. The sacrifice with your budgeting. Yep. Maybe it's going to bring much more fruit mm -hmm. and it's going to set you up for something. You, you right. might not know that, but that's what God can do with the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And for you, Pastor Ed, whatever sacrifices you may have had to made from transitioning from a life that wasn't really in the shade yeah. to now living in the shade and walking mm -hmm. in the shade. You can, you can really attest to that sacrifice. And guys, we want you to know that there's a tight book. Every sacrifice that yep. you've made, God has seen it and he has a record of it in his book. Yes, and so family, in the book, right now in the comments, I need you to mark the spot and say, I am committed to living in the shade, yeah. in the shade. And family, make sure you stay connected during this time. You know, follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your post notifications because you don't want to miss a thing. And we would just like to thank our co-host today, Come on. Ashley. Oh yes, I'm gonna put you in the shade. That's oh, that's 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 in the shade. Shade. Yeah. 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 Literally. Thank you guys so much. Family, we'll be right back here for Activate Midweek this week. Holla. Peace.